Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is uh, Enrico Vini, and um, I'm here to, to talk about the printing villages on the moon. It is a quite uh, provocative sentence. And um, this presentation won't be so technical, but more emotional, because uh, what we are doing today to follow up the project that started in 2009 is still in the blue, or at least uh, it's not workable to be presented in a serious, scientific way. Uh, let's start from the origin. In 2008, I landed on Earth with my truck, with my 3D printer, deployable 3D printer, which should should be placed uh, in, a, in, uh, in a building site in, uh, in Tuscany. Should be a, let's say, a deployable uh, device, uh, very light and uh, suitable to be assembled in a few hours by a couple of people. And uh, our wish was to print a building structure in 3D on site something that uh, unfortunately was impossible to achieve because the storms and rain <laughs> let, uh, obliged us to shatter some Edsworth and printing the shape that you see indoor. So that the, 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 the structure that you see is a conglomerate structure made of uh, crushed dolomite and uh, a mixture of uh, metallic oxide and chloride. And one day I went to Loughborough University and I met this gentleman, Mr. Professor Rupert Sor, who, having heard my story about my wish to print houses on hair, suggested me to, to spike this idea to the European Space Agency, and that's why I'm here in this room. This gentleman was a mad man who filled out of gypsum a termite mud and sectioned layers to understand how a termite mud find, uh, works and 3D printed a, a, a small bit of it. It's a tribute to the man who spiked me the idea to come to ESA and suggest somehow a way to use regolith on the moon. So this is a very first uh, attempt that spiked the idea about how should work this stuff, a deployable, that doesn't work in this uh, movie, uh, sorry. But imagine this uh, 3D, deployable 3D printer with a rover that moves regularly here and there, creating a shelter. Of course, this kind of rendering is not attractive for anyone. So later we assemble a, a, a consortium of, uh, of members uh, of um, uh, a strong consortium aimed to, to bring this into a, a more attractive level of understanding of how printing houses on the moon. And uh, the consortium was made by CITA, that is a company that was called formerly Alta in Pisa where they have a fantastic uh, vacuum chamber where it's possible at least to mimic the vacuum, not the temperature as, as I heard in the, in the room. This shape that is uh, me, the Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna to give an academic uh, mark of this project and the, one of the best architects on earth to transform uh, those renderings in something more uh, more nice to see. And uh, what we did, as Bill was collecting uh, some uh, simulant from the United States in order to print something in 3D using uh, a regular simulant and using the chemistry that we used at the time, that was uh, a chlorine activated process that consisted in into uh, doping uh, regolith with some magnesium oxide because we don't know what, what, what is the status 
of magnesium on, uh, on the moon and binding them with this chlorine liquid. It is a quite challenging matter using a liquid to bind something on the moon because apparently it should freeze uh, and frost and sublimate in a while. And, uh, but we succeed with uh, some tricks to, uh, to, to, give, um, to cement somehow this uh, regolith going underneath of the surface with a sort of pin strategy, playing with capillarity, and so we could uh, avoid the freezing of the liquid, uh, and we could uh, get, get a voxel, a voxel of uh, the first 2D printed voxel is here in, your, in front of you. And uh, at some point, our problem was to collect uh, huge amounts of uh, uh, simulant because uh, collecting simulant in, uh, in, uh, uh, from the United States was extremely costly. It was a nightmare. We, when we asked for an offer, it was a, a matter of several, was exceeding three or four times the budget that we got for this, <laughs> for this project. So because I come from Tuscany, I, the first thing was searching for a Vulcan. And I was quite lucky because within the queries that I selected, one of those got a pretty remarkable result in terms of the confidentiality of uh, both of uh, uh, major element composition and, uh, and mineralogic uh, properties. So now we can say that we have uh, an European regolith with, that we call DNA, that means the Noanti regolith. You don't know the Italian slang, but this is the meaning. And uh, so we are quite independent in terms of uh, having huge amount of regolith to print stuff here in Europe. So we printed some <laughs> items uh, in Pisa, and uh, you can see here the print resolution of, uh, this is a quarter of uh, a ellipsoidic cupola that we did in collaboration with the Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna, who made the monitoring of uh, the layering process with uh, creating an algorithm, an algorithm that might uh, give us knowledge between the mismatching between the theoretical shape and the real one. And uh, in the meanwhile, at Foster and Partners, started uh, the design of uh, a shelter uh, that should be made of an inflatable structure coupled to uh, a blanket of regolith which thickness uh, is uh, something that is uh, really intriguing me about the real thickness that is needed to shelter from, uh, from solar radiation. I read a dozen of papers on this uh, matter and I lost myself. Between 10 centimeters and 10 meters, I don't know which is uh, the most uh, affordable data. But just to stay in the middle, uh, the idea was to make a sort of uh, Aurelian wall. If you have been, have been in Rome and you see the, the, the Roman wall is made of uh, uh, a randomly mass of, uh, of, uh, of uh, granular material that are binded somehow with a thin skin that stay in the outer and inner part. So it's just, it's just a matter to create a wall just to realize a small skin and, uh, and, and freeze and shape as much more mass of regolith. And this has been the concept. Oh, gotcha. Uh, sorry. You hear me? Yeah. yeah. And this is the concept, an inflatable structure and, uh, and the blanket, which thickness can be absolutely realized. And uh, we made, of course, some uh, very rough printing test. Here we see the difference between uh, the theoretical item and the real physical one. You see that because of uh, the poorness of our process, the thickness of the real object is much thicker. So we spread uh, and waste an enormous amount of binder. But was a just uh, let's say was a start somehow. And uh, of course, this has been a project in, into which uh, the ESA has been deeply involved. The material section of ESA has been always in touch during the, problem, the, the, pro, the, the project with us in order to give suggestions about how shaping. And, 
and uh, at some point, at Foster, uh, released the, 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 the rendering of how might look uh, this uh, rover with a tank with some not better identified binder and with this not better even identified vacuum cleaner with a, a printing head which, which uh, real uh, functioning system it would be, is under development because it might be almost everything somehow. And uh, this is uh, the, a section of this uh, sort of bunker that we should print. The patterns uh, uh, are, are topolo topologically op optimized in order to, to get the, the, the right resistance in terms of compression and flexural strength. And we print the pizza very roughly, honestly, a, a, a piece of this uh, shelter. And this is the, the very first physical outcome of a 3D printed building structure made of uh, regolith simulants. And uh, for my understanding, is here in essence. So this is the outline, outcome about what we did. And from here, we move to, toward what we are willing to do, or we are thinking to do. And, uh, and uh, we might say that uh, the group of people of our consortium is, uh, is uh, going here and there. And Foster partners are now thinking about uh, uh, going on Mars, jumping from the moon straight forward to the other planet with uh, this interesting concept of, uh, of, um, of uh, bubbles that are jumping on the moon surface and deploying and inflating with those swarms that are a nice uh, uh, object that can uh, the microwave uh, uh, melt the the, moon, the Mars surface. Uh, I don't know why this there is some opening. So you can see uh, a very nice uh, inspirational scenario. In principle, this is the suggestion by Foster and Parker is uh, making those uh, swarms that are microwave swarms uh, capable to melt to melt the regolith, uh, Martian or even, or even uh, lunar regolith. Who knows? Uh, honestly, I did some trials at home uh, with my uh, microwave kitchen uh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and with some tricks uh, it can work, to be honest, but it wouldn't be serious to go deeper in that. And uh, so you can here imagine how this uh, distributed strategy of collecting sand, uh, Martian sand, or even lunar sand, uh, and collecting and freezing is an interesting concept. Within the several we can imagine. So I just refer what I see. Anyway, Foster is making a huge effort in uh, creating uh, renderings and studies about uh, how the uh, how the, the team might look like, and uh, with this, this uh, very interesting red hats that are attributed to Jacques Cousteau, because he is really someone that is uh, involved in uh, deep maritime uh, stories. So this is a tribute to this to this man. And uh, by our side, um, also nice as the dog. <laughs> and. By our side, that in Pisa, someone else from Santana, Scuola Santana, suggested to to mix regolith with polyurethane to create a, 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 let's say inflatable, rigidized structures, and uh, adding in different ratio <coughs> polyol and isocyanate is possible to create a molded, molded, uh, uh, casted, let's say somehow casted regolith objects. This is something that is worthy of a, a, deeper, uh, a deeper study. We are working on it, to be honest. And uh, because of the ratio of expansion of this kind of, uh, of uh, polymers uh, are extremely high, so in principle, the story started from, by the, from, by the problem of, from the problem of embarking uh, extremely costly binding materials. 
So uh, this is something that is, uh, there is an abundant literature about this matter, but this is something that we are investigating because we are here to talk about printing villages on the moon that might mean uh, printing big building blocks uh, precasted uh, into flexible modes. And uh, those are studies that we are making now to, to quantify how much binder we should collect and the storage into a rocket to send over. And I might bother you for hours uh, with some kind of calculation, but I won't do that. So uh, let's say that I finish this slide with uh, the possibility to create a huge, massive uh, uh, satellite structure into the Lagrangian points uh, with a 3D printed, uh, let's say, foam uh, regolith uh, uh, structure. And I, and I conclude, uh, thank you. And Now we will go to the coffee break. <laughs> so we will see you in, uh, shall, shall we try in 15 minutes?